Hi, welcome back to the shop. It's good to see you again. Um, last time when I made this through spindle coolant tool, uh, I don't think I finished the video off uh, well enough. Uh, I thought I should have done a, a little bit more with the uh, with the yolk here that leaks like a sieve. So I've, I've made another one and uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, also, I, th I thought I might show you how I go about measuring the exact diameter that these things cut. So um, it's not always that easy when you make them yourself to, to get them absolutely spot on. And if you saw last, the last video, you'll see that uh, I had to move the, uh, my G5, sorry, G54 position because I've got it wrong when I picked the part up the following day. Um, so that's, that sounds horrifically complicated, but I've hit a snag. Let me show you. Right, over at the bench here, this is the uh, original arrangement for uh, these saddles. And um, the problem was, as you saw, they, it leaks like a sieve and um, it's not, there's not really enough clamping force, to be honest. So uh, moving that one away, uh, I've had another go and I've reprinted another one. However, um, I want to show you the difference, the very subtle difference. It's exactly the same dimension-wise and part-wise, except I have done away with a fillet here and put a two millimetre hole in. Um, also, this one, the original one, was 80% infill uh, on the print. This is 100% infill, so this is, I mean, it's, it's pretty tough. Uh, and I did it at 100% because uh, I think I might tap that at M3, uh, that two millimetre hole. But uh, yeah, we'll see as I get further into the project. But uh, that is where my trouble started. Here's the problem, over at the mill, the, uh, the power draw bar at the top here is not releasing the tool properly. It's not uh, closing it with enough pressure either. So um, the tool could slip. So that's my problem. And uh, I've diagnosed what the problem is. Right, so if I, um, this is gonna be very wobbly because I've handheld. Oh. If we go over the back of the mill and let me see if I can focus that up so you can see it. There it is, right in the middle of the shot. You can see that there's a leak. The hydraulic oil is coming out of the uh, drive cylinder. So I've sprung a leak. Oh, there's quite a few connections and gubbins. So uh, yeah, let me uh, see if I can get it out. After half an hour of adult language, I've got it. Uh, as far as the, the front of the mill here, and uh, I'll show you a close-up. You can see exactly where the leak is coming from. So here it is. This is the uh, the power cylinder, and and it's in a it's mounted in a block that literally just takes the oil from the power cylinder out the side here, and uh, through a union up to the uh, drive cylinder, and uh, that's where it's leaking. So uh, let me get this disconnected completely and on the bench, and we'll have a look. Right, let's have a little bit of a musical montage while I um, just uh, dismantle this. Well, gents, there we have it. Right, I've um, I've cleaned it up and uh, had a good look, and uh, I can't find any damage on these two O-ring seals. Um, and the fit oh, of the cylinder is is good. So, yeah. Um, 
The only thing I think I can do is probably, oh, excuse me, I've got a cold. Uh, it's probably to replace the O-rings. Right, I've, uh, I've taken the O-rings out and I think I may possibly have found a possible cause. In the bottom of the O-ring grooves, that's a bit rough. Uh, and you're supposed to have a nice um, um, flat polished surface in there, so I think maybe I'll put this on the uh, on the lathe and just get a bit of emery paper in there and just polish those seats up. minutes later and uh, I've got a reasonable finish in there. So uh, let me reassemble it. Finished. Well that took a while. I think I've been working on this power draw bar for this thing for about another day, day and a half. Um, I'll explain what went wrong in a mo. But uh, I put the new tool uh, and tool holder in the quill. Uh, I've got the quill working again, uh, and I've added the new 3D printed yoke. It does work, not very well. It's no longer behind the mill, it's now just sat beside it, and uh, there's, there's a reason for that. Um, you, can't, you won't be able to see it, I have reassembled it all and it does work, but uh, the power cylinder, the, uh, the, the piston in the power cylinder is, uh, I made it out of brass, thinking uh, I'm not sure whether it will survive or not, and the O-rings were, were leaking, so I've replaced those O-rings as well as the O-rings in the bottom that seal it to, to, the, um, uh, to the bottom of the case. So uh, I've left it there outside uh, of the machine rather than put it behind so that if I need to, uh, if it leaks again in the next couple of months, I will put a lip seal on the, um, on the piston uh, and see if that improves things. So it's just, it's a real pig to get it from behind the machine. And over at the mill, here's the um, new tool holder. Um, this is the new 3D printed yoke with two millimeter brass screws to hold it all together. If I just um, shove the coolant hose in, it's already split there, so I'm not entirely sure that it's that, that good. Let me go over to the uh, control panel. Uh, MDI M3 speed 1000 go there we go now if I turn the flood on you'll see it definitely leaks there's a cone of fluid coming off the the yoke but also you can see below that there's a cone of fluid coming off the the actual tool so uh, let me do M5 stop the spindle. Let me just rotate it so we can see it. If I turn the flood on again, and flood, there we go. There you go. There is a uh, quite a strong flow of, uh, of coolant coming out of the, the hole that we put in. So it does work. Anyway, let me, um, let me get set up to do some test cuts and uh, we'll uh, see just how good this cutter is. Let's call that zero. Zero, 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 zero. Right. MBI, G1. Z minus two. And G1 X. What do we reckon that is? 70. Let's go 
No, let's go, let's go 100 mil. 100 mil. Feed. Feed. 50. Up the speed a little bit and go. Now I've got to this end uh, with a plunge cut that's the full width of the cutter. I'm going to move over one millimeter one way, go back, go one millimeter the other way, then come back here and repeat that operation. Uh, and then we should be able to measure the, the exact diameter that cutter is. Um, my piece of trash binium aluminium uh, has turned out quite nicely. That's a, that's a nice finish. I'm quite chuffed with that. So this tool was designed to have a nominal diameter of 20 mil. And uh, but if you watched the last video, you saw that um, machining the actual pocket position, I uh, did it over two days, and I don't think my mill picked up the exact same. Uh, G54 centre position for the, for cutting, so that had moved. Um, so consequently, what we've done is we've just run down this this uh, scrap binium part, moved over a millimetre, come back, moved over another millimetre the other way, and gone back, and then repeated the operation as for spring cuts. So um, this width of this channel should be 20 millimetres. There's a 20 mil gauge block plus two millimetres and uh, if I put the two millimetre block in as well this still wobble. So uh, let me give you a close-up and you'll see what I mean. This uh, is the combination that I think fits it best. That's a nice, that's a, a snug fit, there's no play in that whatsoever and that is uh, 20 plus a one plus a 1.4, so 22.4. We've determined reasonably accurately, I think, and tell me if I'm wrong, uh, I probably am, uh, uh, that running the cutter through the part, then moving it one millimetre this way, then one millimetre that way, uh, and um, doing a spring pass again, um, using the gauge blocks to find out the width of the, the subsequent slot, we end up with um, uh, a cutter diameter of 20.4 millimetres. Now that doesn't matter to me whether that's 20.4, 19.8, whatever. As long as I know what it is, then I can use that as the uh, uh, as the tool diameter in CAD. So we've got a winner. I thought it might be interesting to um, see what this uh, cutter works like in scrap binium steel. Right, so uh, there we are. Um, finish, yeah, it's all right. It's pretty good. Uh, considering it's actually an aluminium cutter, not designed for steel, uh, I'm not sure that um, the steel ones seem to be blunder to me, so I'm not entirely sure that it would make a, a good job, because I don't think that my mill is rigid enough. Um, and just for giggles, this is 20.4mm gauge block stack, and that actually fits in there a treat. So we're pretty accurate, I think, with the overall diameter, and um, yeah, I'm chuffed to bits with, uh, with that. If, um, if anybody knows of, uh, a, um, and I don't, I'm not at all good with hydraulics, if anybody knows of a decent way to seal something like this, uh, this yoke, so that all the coolant goes through the through the spindle. That would be uh, really interesting to know. So uh, in the comments, do let us know if you if you've got any ideas on that. Maybe it's worth revisiting. Is it worth it for a home shop? Mm, probably not. 
But uh, does that matter? That's not what we're here for, is it? We're here for the fun. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Uh, do join us again next time and uh, stay safe and we'll see you again. Bye-bye. Back in a scrap for you, my lovelies. <laughs>